Today we're creating this interactive liquid glass scene, complete with hover effects, click animations, and a grid background, all in Spline. Spline makes it easy to bring liquid glass concepts to life, from visual style and lighting to real-time interactivity, all without writing a single line of code. Let's start by creating the background using a depth layer for that soft, dreamy blur effect. First, adjust the background color to something brighter. Pause here to see what exact code we used. Select the default rectangle that comes with the created scene. Set the shape size to 2000 on both the X and Y axis and move it back around negative six on the Z axis. Now let's adjust its material. With the rectangle still selected, go to the right side panel and change the color layer to depth to create a soft gradient effect. Click the depth layer icon to reveal its settings. Adjust the far value by dragging the outer handlebar in the viewport. I used a value of 1180. Then adjust the near value. I used 73. Next, slightly offset the depth layer by dragging the red arrow of the gizmo along the x-axis. I moved it to negative 374. Now lift it up slightly by dragging the green arrow of the gizmo along the y-axis. I moved it to 102. Let's refine the color ramp of the depth layer. For the first color stop, use a brighter blue-toned gray. Pause here to see what exact code we used. Then for the second stop, choose a darker blue toned gray. Pause again to see the exact values. To make the gradient pop a bit more, change the lighting layer blending mode to overlay and set its opacity to 40% to tone it down slightly. Now zoom in on the viewport to see the background at full scale. And one last tweak, set the depth layer blending mode to smooth for a more natural gradient effect. Now let's add a background grid. Start by creating a rectangle and resetting its transforms. Set its shape size to 1.5 by 3000. Turn on the cloner and set it to grid mode. Adjust the count to 20 by 1 by 1. Then tweak the size on the x-axis to 180 for even spacing. Next, update the material. Set the lighting to 10. And change the color to pure black. Get 5% opacity. Now duplicate this grid and rotate it 90 degrees on the z-axis. Finally, let's organize the layers a bit. Group them and give each layer a clear name. Now let's create the centerpiece, a liquid blob using Shape Blend. In the top toolbar, click the plus icon, then select Shape Blend from the list. This will add a Shape Blend object to your scene. Adjust the sphere size to 128 on X, Y, and Z to make it larger. With the Shape Blend object selected, set its size to 2 to enlarge the bounding box. Move the Shape Blend forward by setting its Z position to around 240 so it sits in front of the background. Set the resolution to high to view the blended shapes in greater detail. By default, Shape Blend adds a sphere primitive. You can also choose from other shapes like cube, torus, and cylinder, which we'll use in just a moment. Now it's time to make our object look more glassy and liquid-like. We'll use a combination of glass and Fresnel settings to achieve this effect. With the Shape Blend selected, click on the color layer and choose glass from the drop-down menu to swap it for a glass layer. Click the glass icon to open its properties and set the blur to 2 for a subtle background blur, thickness to 97, and refraction to 1.47 to simulate liquid glass-like distortion. Next, click the plus icon in the material panel to add a new layer. 
Set this layer to Fresnel and drag it below the lighting layer so that it interacts naturally with scene lighting on the material surface. Open the Fresnel layer. Set the color to full black. Adjust the bias to negative 0.4 to reduce its intensity and lower its opacity to 10%. Now, change the lighting layer blending mode to screen and reduce its intensity to 30 so lights blend in the material more naturally. Finally, open the lighting layer, switch its mode to physical for finer control over light behavior. Set roughness to 0.73 to create a rougher highlight, metalness to one, and reflectivity to zero. Our material is now ready, but to really make the glass effect stand out, let's set up the lighting to highlight our shape along the edges and create a softer shadow on the background. First, select the directional light already in the scene. Adjust its position to minus 290 on X, 400 on Y, and 650 on Z to control the direction of the shadow on the background plane. To soften the drop shadow, set the blur to around 18. Let's name this light, Light Shadow. Now, let's create a highlight on our object by adding a new directional light from the plus icon in the toolbar. This will serve as our primary key light, so let's name it Light Key. We only want the original light to cast shadows, so for this one, set shadows to No in the right-hand panel. Position the light a minus 195 on X, 330 on Y, and minus 1600 on Z. Increase its intensity to 10 so the highlight effect is more pronounced. As you orbit around the scene, you'll notice that this light is positioned behind the object, so it reflects mainly on the top edge, creating a beautiful glossy highlight. To add more detail to this effect, duplicate the light key you just created. Set the duplicate's position to minus 265 on X, 330 on Y, and minus 745 on Z. Tone down its intensity to two for a more subtle layered effect. Now, let's add our final light source to introduce highlights on the bottom right of the object. Duplicate light key two and adjust its position to 360 on X, minus 200 on Y, and minus 2000 on Z. Set its intensity to around five. And now, with our material and lighting setup complete, we've successfully created a liquid glass effect. Next, let's tweak our composition a bit. Select the sphere inside the shape blend and move it to X, negative 94, and Y, negative two to create a pleasing distortion in the grid behind. Now add a cylinder from the toolbar. You'll notice the blending between the two objects is a bit too strong. Select the shape blend object and reduce the blending amount to 26 for a more subtle transition. Adjust the cylinder height to 210. Set both the top and bottom values to 64 and increase the corner to 64 for a nicely rounded shape. Next, rotate the object by setting its Z rotation to 90 and reposition it to 100 on X and negative two on Y for a cleaner, more balanced composition. Our composition is now set. Let's add interactivity and motion to bring that smooth, fluid, liquid glass effect to life. Select the sphere. Click the plus icon in the States panel to create a new state. In this new state, set the sphere size to X 140 and Y 140 to scale it up slightly. You can now toggle between the two states and see the transformation in your scene. Let's connect this with an event. At the events panel, click the plus icon to add a new event. By default, the event type is set to start. Change it to mouse hover. In the action section, add a transition action. This will let us animate between the states when hovering. Expand the transition settings. It should already target our sphere, which is perfect. Set the first state to base state and make sure the second one is the other state. Change the transition type to spring with the default values for a smooth, natural feel. Now hit play mode to test your hover effect. Looks great. Next, let's add motion to our cylinder. Select the cylinder and add a state. Select the base state and set X to minus 99 to align it with the sphere. Reduce its height to 128 so it visually merges into the sphere. 
select the other state on the cylinder. In this state, set X to 100 and height to 210 to move and extend it. Now, return to the sphere and add another event with the plus icon at the events panel. Set the event type to mouse down from the dropdown to trigger actions on click or tap. Add a transition action and expand its settings. Change the target to the cylinder so the sphere can trigger its animation. Set the mode to toggle. This allows repeated transitions between states on each click. Ensure the initial state is set to base state and the transition type is spring. Now enter play mode and test the interaction. You've now created a fluid, clickable transition between states, also working on touchscreens. Bonus tip, try adding a drag and drop event to one of the objects to easily create an even more fluid, hands-on interactive experience. And that's it. You've just built a stunning interactive 3D scene, ready to share or seamlessly embed into your website. Export the scene effortlessly and drop it into any web builder to showcase your scene in a production-ready environment. Want to try it yourself? Check the link in the description. And if you create something amazing, tag us. We'd love to see what you make. See you in the next tutorial.